I'm here for the ones who do. I wanted to talk a little bit about in this video. I'm sorry if it's a little bit dark because um, it's really sunny out and my phone is just not cooperating. In terms of lighting it properly, we're gonna just work with it the way that it is because we got the stuff to do. So, you do not like that my camera, that the phone is jumping a little bit. Um, I'll have to perfect it. I have a new car now, so uh, I'll just have to perfect the whole setup another time but uh, this is Aesthetica's Ocean in Ice Mocha I absolutely love it I did review another wig in Ice Mocha uh, Reeves and I have the review up on that that one is up it's like as hot as it wants to pee up here I live in the northeastern part of the country and it is either the frozen tundra or it is humid and mucky or raining okay um, but it is sort of Fall, winter is the, the longest. Um, spring and summer are shorter for where I live. Absolutely love fall though. If you love fall, like, let me know. I just love all fall things, pumpkin spice, leaves. Um, I'm fortunate to where I live, like we get some of the most beautiful changing colors. Um, I love Halloween. I love everything like spiders and, you know, spooky and witches. I love all that stuff. So fall is coming up and I couldn't be more excited. But I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, I've been reviewing wigs now for three years. So I wanted to, to talk a little bit about things that I have noticed that are different in terms of maybe, you know, things I used to do that I don't do now or vice versa with regard to wigs because I have noticed some of the comments on some of my older videos, you know, people are asking different questions and commenting on different things, which is fine, but I have noticed that my preferences have changed or my techniques have changed, evolved over uh, the course of the three years. And I think I reviewed like 700 wigs at this point. It's a lot, maybe 500. I mean, for at least four re wig reviews a week for, and I mean, sometimes it's more because sometimes there's two in one video or whatever, but like I average about four wig reviews a week, um, you know, times three years. That's a lot. And there were wigs that I have worn that I had not reviewed. So that's a lot of wigs. So a couple things that I noticed. One is I noticed that there are things that I do and I have been sort of maybe doing disclaimers, okay? But there's things that I do that I wouldn't necessarily recommend to the beginner or to someone. Like for example, I use heat on my wigs on myself and I don't have a problem with it. But I know that some people, I wouldn't recommend a new wig wearer to steam their wig on their head, but I do do that because for me it makes more sense in terms of me showing you what you would be doing or how it looks or what um, it's, it's for filming purposes it's just it makes more sense that way especially for my filming setup I don't have a setup necessarily that would let me do it on a wig head and you can really see what you need to see the other thing is you should use for the most part a wide tooth comb on your synthetic wigs I do, you can see, I do use a wide tooth brush. Um, I use a metal wig brush from Revlon. And I also use a round brush. If you want your wigs to last a long, long time, using some of those may um, shorten their lifespan. However, I like those tools because I like the result and we all have different preferences. So I'm gonna continue to use the tools that I want to use um, but I will be more mindful to let people know that if you're you know raking over your wig with a brush uh, then it may not last as long if you're someone who doesn't wear their wigs consistently um, or rotates quite a few you may not feel you know that that's an issue for you um, but but in general for synthetic, and I'm not talking about human hair because I don't wear human hair. In general for synthetic, the best way to, you know, style your wig in terms of, you know, the longevity would be to do a wide tooth comb. I have 
certain brushes that I'm just, a, I just like. A lot of it has to do with like aesthetics or ergonomics. Uh, it just is what it is. And since, you know, I spent a lot of time doing this, you know, I want to enjoy it. The other thing is, um, I noticed that I don't worry as much in terms of, you know, baby hairs and wig cap colors and things like that. I've noticed that for the most part, if you're going to put powder in the part, you're not going to really notice the wig cap on me at least. Um, and I tend to use a black wig cap a lot or a darker colored wig cap, which may seem counterintuitive, but it's going to create a shadowed effect, especially if you're doing like a rooted wig, where once you put powder on it, to me, you don't notice. I also am not as hyper as I used to be about how the hairline looks, because if you didn't watch the video, uh, for the most part, you know, people don't know you're wearing a wig unless they know you're wearing a wig, if that makes sense. Um, please watch that video so you can see what my perspective is on. It doesn't have to be like perfect. You don't always have to have this sharp part. Like it doesn't have to be that way. Um, the other thing I noticed is my preferences have changed. Um, I'm always wanting to wear like the long, long, long wigs. Um, but my preferences have changed and I've noticed that I like name brand wigs more than I thought that I would. And I am going to review both because I do think that it's valuable to review both and understand, um, you know, affordable wigs versus name brand wigs, just like anything else. Shoes, purses, clothes. Truthfully, do I think that name brand wigs are necessarily worth it? Yes and no. I think for those of you who need medical grade wigs, um, the name brand wig is going to cater to what you would need in terms of cap construction more than an affordable brand. If I think that you're just a regular wig wearer, I do believe that there are brands, and I have many videos on this, that if you could look past the marketing and who they're marketed to, you would understand that they are actually multicultural. And please spare me with the, you know, wigs are just for certain people. I don't want to hear that. Um, I've been flagging a lot of comments in my on my channel to make sure that um, everybody feels included, that we are as multicultural as I can be, you know, as one person. And that's just something I'm just like not even going to be going there, you know, that wigs are only for certain people. Like, it's ridiculous. Everybody has hair loss. Men, women, all races, all genders, kids, whatever. Everybody has hair loss issues, so um, please save me with that part. And... Let's see, the other, like, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I don't think there is. I don't think there's anything else in terms of, like, things I've really, really noticed. I guess overall what I'm saying is I've reviewed wigs so long, and at this point, I just don't get as hyper about it. Like, I don't, it's not as noticeable as I thought it was at one point. And so it doesn't bother me as much as it has when I first started wearing wigs. Um, I don't really secure my, I don't use the combs anymore. I don't secure my wigs down. I don't worry about any of that. Not to say that if you do that it's an issue, I'm just saying that I don't. Uh, so yeah, so it's just a little like what has changed um, about my wig wearing life and what has it. So again, this is Aesthetica's Ocean. And if you have stopped doing stuff or started doing stuff, um, based on your experience with wearing wigs, go ahead and put that down below. I'd love to start a conversation about it. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. If you have, you're one of my doll babies. Thank you so much for supporting me. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.